All right, Warriors, we are live from the quarantine zone, quarantine zone, as we are now calling it. It's Monday, and uh, we've got a great hurricane workout in store for you. And it's Coach Josh, and you might not have been uh, able to pay attention to all the stuff going on in the last uh, week here at Training for Warriors, but the theme of the month is about unplugging, um, which is... Um, what a great challenge at a time where we are essentially tethered to the rest of the world through phones and, and computer screens. But uh, the, the, uh, the act of unplugging and taking a breath, spending time with family, reading a physical book, doing some of that other stuff that um, we're working on during this quarantine challenge, uh, that has a lot of measured benefits for your brain, for, uh, for your heart, for your sleep, um, all of those things. So. Uh, getting some unplugged time is, uh, is the theme of the month in, in terms of uh, your do more in your 164. And to review what that, it, what that means is there are 168 hours in a week. And 164 of them, you're not going to be training with your coach. Um, most of the time, you're only going to be training three or four or five hours uh, with your TFW coach. So it means that the other 164 hour, hours outside of that, you're on your own and you've got you've to go into the roar, slay the dragon, and you got to, uh, you've got to take on these challenges, that, um, that, that these daily decisions without, without support, only knowing what you know and being able to, to leverage your, your, your wisdom against the habits that you're trying to create. So, uh, they're in your 164. That's when you read. That's when you spend time with your family. That's when you uh, that's when you cook, prepare food for yourself. That's when you do these other things that are nurturing. Just like your training for warriors workout is nourishing your physical and your and your mental resilience. That being said, the uh, the story for today is about everyday heroes. We're talking about superheroes uh, in, in your everyday life. You the people around you, the people that you know, your post, your, uh, the, the, the person who's delivering your mail, you know, bagging groceries, still doing these important things. Everybody's working in the healthcare care sector right now um, on the front lines. But uh, this is a, a much simpler everyday hero story. I don't know if you guys remember uh, Wesley Autry in 2007. It's a construction worker going to work, uh, uh, taking his two daughters to school in the subway in New York and sees another uh, passenger in the subway, uh, a person named Cameron, who is falling onto the tracks and is having a seizure. And uh, Wesley jumps down onto the tracks and pins him down so that he can't electrocute himself on the third rail and holds him there until the, uh, the uh, uh, authority is able to shut off the power and get them both safely out of the subway. And uh, I, uh, what did, I was just uh, going over in my mind, like they, you, know, you had to jump, you had to decelerate safely on the platform, and then he had to have enough core stability to hold on to a writhing person as he was uh, uh, flailing around. And so it's a good thing we train legs, it's a good thing we train core here at TFW so that you could be able to save someone's life if necessary, hopefully not, but if necessary. So. Um, uh, but just a, re a reminder that the training that, that you do mentally and physically impacts your life outside of Training for Warriors. Speaking of training, let's get to it. So we're going to warm up our entire body, our hips for a kettlebell hurricane again today. And today's hurricane is, is um, just, think of, uh, just think of like a, uh, uh, an anthem, something that has great rising action. So for the first couple of rounds of our hurricane, it's not going to be so intense. And then our third round, that's really going to be the finale or the, uh, the climax of the, of the workout, of the training. I have a feeling you're going to like it a lot, but we've got to get prepared for it. So we're going to get warmed up. We're going to start with some inchworms. So I'm standing up, feet hip width apart, and I'm going to walk out my body. I'm going to walk out into a plank. And then when I come back, I'm in the high plank here, elbows locked. I'm gonna lead with my hips on the way back. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let my arms come into this overhead position. And I'm gonna push back, touch my toes, come back out. 
overhead, leading with the hips on the way back, keeping those legs as stiff as I can, stretching those hamstrings, also stretching out my upper back and my lower back. We're going to go ahead and do 10 inchworms here. Five. All the way out. If you're feeling spry, you can add a push up into it. Coming out. Leading with the hips. Two more. Yes. All right. We're going to go to the couch stretch. So, I've got my makeshift couch set up. I'm going to take my knee of my left side, push it down into the or push it down into the floor. My right foot flat on the floor. I'm going to push my right foot down to the floor and that's going to tilt my pelvis. So I had a little arch. I'm going to flatten out that low back by using my right leg to apply some pressure. Then I'm going to reach my left hand up overhead. And I'm just going to lean away from that left hip, stretching my lat and my quad at the same time, really opening up that body. Whew. I'm going to take a few breaths here. And then I'm going to relax. Whew. Nice. Switch up. Set my knee down. Now my left foot is flat on the ground in front of me. I'm going to use that left foot to push pressure down, help flatten out that low back. Reaching up with my right hand, then reaching away from that hip. Whew. Does not take much to really get that hip to stretch. So I'm enjoying it. Getting the most from it. I'm going to take a total of five breaths. So we we'll take three more, inhaling through the nose. Exhaling through the mouth. Inhaling through the nose. Exhaling through the mouth. One more breath. And then I'm going to stand up. Ha! Oof. Shake it out. So we're going to do a uh, lateral lunge and touchdown. So what I'm going to do is stepping out, take both of my hands, come down and touch the inside of my heel on the lead leg, standing all the way up, reach out, touch down, all the way up, going back forth, back, so I'm touching, touching, now I'm going to add a T-spine rotation to it, so I'm going to come down, reach out, then follow, so I'm stepping, reaching, boom. We're going to do two more reps on each side. Step. Whoops, I forgot the T-spine part. Sorry, I'll get on this one. <laughs> Reach up. Follow. I'm waking up. Just have my coffee. It's going to be okay. Boom. One more for good measure. And then finally, ah. Okay. Now we're going to warm up those hips with some real medicine now. 
hip seven ways. This is gonna strengthen the glutes, the glute medius in a lot of ways with a bent knee and a straight leg, um, different positions. This is gonna help us keep the hips, knees, and low back in really good shape as we don't get to move around as much as we used to with our current restricted lifestyle. So I'm on my side. I'm here, I'm gonna prop off the ground with my high hand. My toe is gonna to point down towards the earth. My feet are gonna be about 12 inches apart on the downstroke, 24 inches apart on the up. So I'm gonna do 10 reps of this leg lift here, the toe pointing down. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drift forward to the center. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, I'm just stopping when those feet get over each other. Do 10 reps there. Then I'm gonna go back into the center. Two, three, four. Keeping that toe pointed down. Keeping the hip stack hip stacked, shoulder stacked. Now I'm gonna kick all the way through. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm gonna do tiny circles forward, small circles, three, four, five, Six, you might feel this a little bit in your butt. Then go back, tiny circles backwards. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we gotta pedal the bike home. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha ha! All right, exciting stuff. Now we get to go to the other side. I'm lying on my right side. And again, this is gonna help prevent knee pain, back pain. We're gonna go straight up and down, two, three. Hips are stacked, shoulders stacked, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Forward into the center, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back to the center. Two, two, three, four, five. Heels higher than the toe. Seven, eight, nine, ten. All the way through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If your hip is tired already, you might have noticed it was working on the other side too. Small circles forward. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Small circles back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Pedal that bicycle. We're almost home. Two, three, four. Big strokes. Five. Toe pointed down. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha, 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 ha. Oh. All right. That was a good workout. You know, I think that was good for today. I, I think that's uh, pretty much all I needed. I don't know about you, but... Oh, kidding, of course. Uh, all right, if you have a kettlebell, go ahead and grab it, whip it out. You have dumbbells or you're, you're using your cat, you can just squat along with us. So anytime we do a kettlebell exercise, you can do 10 body weight squats. Heels shoulder width apart, chest up. I'm gonna be doing swings. As you know, some of you have uh, kettlebells at home. 
So we'll work through that. So we're going to be doing some swings today and we want to make sure that our hip hinge is warmed up. And to do that, we're going to stand in front of our kettlebell and we're going to practice hinging out. So I'm going to reach my butt back. I'm going to touch that kettlebell. Knees are going to bend, but the hip is going to stay above the knee. So you're squeezing the glutes on the way forward. Three, four, we're going to do 10 reps, five, six, seven, eight, nine, really lock out those hips at the top, 10. So you should feel that in the hamstrings, glutes, low back. Now I'm going to be standing over my kettlebell. I'm going to reach back and touch, squeezing the glutes, again, driving those hips underneath you because that's how you're going to need to finish that kettlebell swing. It's going to be very powerful. Exhaling forcefully on the way up. Ten reps. All right. So now we're over the kettlebell. We're going to do a kettlebell deadlift. Same exact pattern that you've done with the last couple of uh, exercises. You're just going to pick up your kettlebell and set it back down. So I'm back, standing all the way up, setting it down, standing all the way up, setting it down. So I'm going to do 10 reps here. Again, that chest stays high, driving the hips forward. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha! All right. So now we've warmed up the, those hips, practice the pattern. We're going to do 10 kettlebell swings here. And when, uh, when I do a swing, I want that side muscle, that lat, to be highly involved. So how I do that, how I ensure that is, as I hold my kettlebell, I'm opening up a jar with my shoulders, not with my wrists, with my shoulders. And that's going to keep the, the lat involved the whole time. So I'm going to reach my butt back tilt the kettlebell towards me. I'm about a step away from my kettlebell and I'm going to pitch it back behind me. Stand straight up. Then I'll do 10 swings. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. Okay. So I've gotten those hips warmed up. And if you're squatting, you got those squats warmed up. So our hurricane today, we're going to be doing swings, rainbows, and curls. And so if you, are, if you have tools at home, you'll follow along. If you don't have any tools when it comes to your rainbows and curls, I just want you to do plank shoulder taps for the rainbows, and then up-downs for the curls. So every time you tap each shoulder, that's one. Every plank up-down, that's another one. So we're going to be doing sets of 10, so you'll follow along that way. But you'll, if you have a tool, you'll be doing swings. And a rainbow, a standing rainbow, looks like this. So I've got my kettlebell. I'm going to touch my hip make a rainbow, touch my hip, rainbow, hip. So when I am moving, my glutes are squeezed. I'm touching that hip, drawing that circle or half circle all the way up over my head, touching the other hip. That's one. Boom. Two. So legs are locked, glutes are locked, and you'll do 10 reps of those. And then kettlebell curl. Here, just doing a curl, like a preacher curl, with your dumbbell, kettlebell, whatever you got. You'll do 10 reps of that, and then have a short break, and you'll go right back into your circuit. So swing, rainbow, curl, 
30 seconds of rest, back to the top. So we're going to go through that circuit three times, and then we'll have a nice break. We'll learn our next exercises. And again, we'll build up an intensity over this, over this circuit. So uh, we'll have a chance to really get fired up in the next few minutes. I'm going to put on some uh, music. Hopefully, you're listening to something fun. You're not just listening to me just about pass out from doing these hurricanes. All right. Round one. Let's go. Swinging as powerful as you can if you're doing squats. Exhaling on the way up, squeezing the glutes. Make it, make sure that technique comes before the weight or how many reps do you do? Only do the good reps. Going into the rainbow. Hip to hip. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Just to review, if you're doing the plank version of it, you're doing shoulder taps and then plank up downs instead of curls. Curls. One, two, three. Glutes on. Four, five, six, seven. Eight. <laughs> All right, Josh needs to let her wait. <sighs> Woo. All three exercises. Rest 30 seconds at the end, then get back after it. That was round one for me. Round two. This one I'm going to do the uh, alternate version so everybody can get a demo of that. Swings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. And then ten shoulder taps. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five. Trying to keep the hips level as you roll through it. Pushing both feet into the floor. Same with the plank up downs. Three, four, ha. Whew. exciting stuff. Two rounds in, 30 second break. Go right back to it. If you're ahead of me, don't feel bad. If you're behind me, go at your own pace. All right, third round, last set. Best set. Ten swings, your rainbows, your curls. 
your planks. Legs locked when you're going overhead. Yes. Ha. That's right, Heather. Get that bicep pump. Finishing strong with the curls. One, two, three. Okay, warriors, now we're awake, now we're awake. So the next round, we're going to do swings and lots of abs. So we're going to do pullovers and plank marches. So the swing you know, the pullover. We're gonna do 10 reps. So if you have a light weight, you don't need weight either. I'm gonna demonstrate with no weight. But I'm gonna be on the ground. My low back is gonna be flat. So the harder I wanna make this, the further I reach out my legs. But I have to keep my low back on the ground. So I'm here, flattening out the back. And then on my rep, once I find that tension point, keeping my back flat, reaching overhead, touching the floor with my hands. I'm going to be reaching to the floor. Now, your shoulder mobility will dictate how far you really get to go. But you got to keep that back flat. Rib cage down as you reach overhead. So you're going to do 10 pullovers. Then you're going to flip over. And you're going to do tw 10 plank marches. So I'm here. Kicking up the foot. So I'm just lifting my foot about eight, 12 inches off the ground. Every other one is one. So I'm gonna do 10 plank marches, 10 pullovers, and I'm gonna do 15, one, five, 15 swings or squats. So we're upping the ante on the swing. So to create more of a demand, I think you're gonna notice it, but I think you're gonna be just fine. All right, so swings, marches, pullovers. I'm ready when you are. Starting in three, two, and go. Exhaling on the way up with that swing or the squat, squeezing the glutes like you're trying to crack a walnut in those butt cheeks. Six. Seven, eight, nine, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Wow. It's only five extra, but you really noticed that, you know? Back to the pullover. On the ground. One. Low back is flat. Rib cage is down. If your elbow starts to bend, then just stop there. Don't force it. You're trying to find the limit of your shoulder's mobility. You're not trying to force anything to happen. The goal is to keep control of that body, of those abs, as you move your arms and your legs. So rib cage down the whole time. 10 reps, nice. I'm already shaking. That's gotta be a good sign. So we're going over into the plank march. So I'm lifting, tapping. Again, I'm not trying to pound my feet into the floor. I want to be controlled. Two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right. Woohoo! Get ready for round two. Get a 20, 30 second break. Get some rest, get some water if you need it. Get powered up for this next round. You want to be explosive for your marches and your pullovers. Woohoo! All right. I'm ready. Enough stalling. No more putting it off. Butt back, chest up. Explode through. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Ha! Yes. Pullovers. Ten reps. Again, if you want to make it harder, let those feet drift further out, but your low back still has to be flat. Bob, I'm watching you. Chris, I'm watching you. Make sure that spine is long. Breathing. Six, ten reps, seven, rib cage down, eight, nine, and ten. Flipping it over, doing the uh, plank march. Again, only lifting those feet eight to 12 inches off the ground, being conservative, trying not to flail. I want to be in control here. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha! All right. Whew. Hopefully, you're getting something out of this. Hopefully, you're getting pushed a little bit. I know I am, coach is growing. All right. Take that 30 seconds, take that break. When you're ready to be strong, hit your last set. The reason why we do last set, best set is because the brain remembers the most stressful repetition or input to a, a motor engram. So if your last rep, you're shaking and you're falling apart doing the melting candle, that's what your brain will think a squat is or a push up. But if you're crisp, if you're explosive, if you're powerful, that's how your mind remembers the training. You get better and better at it over time and, and deepen your mastery versus having to start all over every day. So just a little reminder, make every rep count especially the final few. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 12, 13, 14, 15. Ha. Back to the pullover. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. March, plank marches. Finish it strong. One. Hips at the same height as the shoulders. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, 10. All right, making great time. Okay, we're coming up to our last circuit. So this is a doozy. You're gonna do 20 swings. Yeah, I know if you're not doing swings, you're doing squats, but we're gonna do a set of 20. And then you're gonna go to do lunges, prisoner lunges, 10 per side. So you're gonna do 20 swings, 10 lunges on each side, which is a total of 20. And you're gonna finish with another 10 squats. So yes, if you don't have a kettlebell, you're doing squats twice, I understand that. But the idea is to accumulate some leg stress, to tear down that muscle, to build it back stronger. So <clears throat> if you don't have an appropriate size weight at home, you might have to do fewer reps or uh, modify, but that's okay. But the goal is get as much leg volume as we can right now. Prisoner lunge, fingertips behind your ears. I'm gonna reverse, step back, keeping that chest up, shoulder blades together, elbows back. I'm gonna do 10 per side. Knee is almost gonna touch the ground, but not quite, not quite. So I'm going deep on those lunges, but not hitting the ground. Then I'm gonna do squats. Now you can do a prisoner squat, dropping down into the squat, pressure on the outside of the foot. You can also do a I Dream of Genie here, or a goblet squat if you have a dumbbell or something to hold on to. All of those are perfectly fine. So we're gonna do 20 swings, 10 lunges on each side, 10 squats. That's the drill. Heart rate's gonna go through the roof. I'm ready for it. I think you are all ready for it. So let's, uh, let's finish strong. 20 swings. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Lunges. Going through, chest up, elbows back. Two. Three, four, staying strong, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten squats, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, victory. So, you might need a minute to get that heart rate down, just enough so we're gonna do quality reps on the next round. I'm gonna grab some more water. A note on the kettlebell swing. It's tempting to get aggressive with it and try to anticipate the swing, meaning bend the knees before the kettlebell gets to you. What happens if you do that, if you bend the knees, that kettlebell will come too far out in front of you and it'll be a, you'll be at a mechanical disadvantage. If you wait till the kettlebell gets here to bend the knees, you're gonna be in a hinge and that, that kettlebell will stay closer to your center of gravity and make it safer for you to swing in the long haul, in the long run. So I try to catch myself doing that and prevent it. So all you have to do is hesitate. Think about waiting for the kettlebell to come to you and it always will, as long as you don't let go of it. All right, second set of 20. Butt back, chest up, boom. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, nineteen, twenty. Ha! Prisoner lunges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Ten squats. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go deep. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. 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 Yes. So remember, when you're tired, V for victory, superhero pose. Whew. No sitting in a corner in the hungover position. Be down. Approach. Get ready. Mentally, physically prepared. That gut check, that intestinal fortitude. Practicing our finish, so I got this. Halusa! Oh yeah. All right, last set. Best set, finish strong, Warriors. Let's bring it on home. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right. Lunges. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Squats. Squat it up. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ha! Joke's on you, training. I survived. So, as your heart rate calms down, you can set out that mat to do your homework. Because we gotta do swimmers, knee grabs, we gotta do squats. We still we still gotta practice the basics. Doing it every day. So we're gonna do 20 squats, and the reason why squats are part of the homework is because the legs are so valuable. Hormonally, they have such big muscles. When we train them, we get a really good hormone response. We 
burn a lot of calories when we use our legs. Leg day is just so much more demanding than anything else that we do. Even though training our arms and everything else is hard, it's just not as metabolically demanding. So you're gonna bang out 20 squats. I got 10 more. Again, when I come down in my squat, trying to keep that pillar, rib cage down, driving my hips forward on the way up, exhaling on the way up, everything, everything matters. Using my whole foot. If I need to emphasize pressure on the outside of the feet to keep that foot grabbing the earth, I'll do that. Then we're doing our knee grabs. So I'm on the ground and I'm lying down, chest on the ground, or shoulders on the ground, grabbing my shins. As soon as my shoulder blades touch, that is one. I'm gonna do 10 of these. And I can fire my arms forward with momentum. I just can't reach up over my head. I need everything to stay in the silhouette of my body. So staying strong, moving forward, 10 reps. And then when you're done with your, your knee grabs, you're going to get into the swimmer position. So you'll be here. Reaching out, again, shoelaces into the floor, chest up, fingertips apart, pulling that water towards you, shoulders lighting up and down, not touching the ground with my chest, my hands, just letting everything be alive. I'm gonna do 20 reps of this, nine, 10, getting those hands as close to my rib cage as I can. 17, we gotta do this every day to make up for all that back work that we need to do. We're just not doing because of our environment, because of the time equipment constraint. But speaking of equipment constraints, we've got some uh, videos to upload or actually uploaded for you to do stuff with equipment to get some bonus training throughout your week to uh, go the extra mile. Just like Wesley Autry did when he jumped into the subway to save Cameron, who was having a seizure. He went that extra mile, he was ready for it, didn't, get to, didn't even sprain an ankle or a knee, making that jump to the platform. And, uh, and I know that I wouldn't, and neither would any of you, because you're continually training, eating, and recovering to bring forth the warrior within.